Hello there and welcome to City Line. We are zooming from my kitchen to your home and it's great to be with you. We have a lovely hour ahead of us. Later on, we'll be talking with Rain Incubator. We get to know them and Dr. David Hirschberg will be here to talk about what they do for our wonderful city. Did you know that Tacoma has a tool library? Well, we do. And Tori will be here to talk about that. Cascade Regional Blood Services will be here because our blood levels are at a critical level. So we're gonna find out what we can do to help them. The Humane Society will be here with our pet of the week. And with me, I have two fabulous individuals who are here to talk about the Crystal Justice Family Center and the Catherine Place serving survivors in the time of COVID. Please join me in welcoming back Tracy Kelly. You are the executive director of Catherine Place. So good to see you, my dear. Good to see you too. And Nadia Van Adder, you are the victim services services supervisor for the Crystal Judson Family Justice Center. Welcome back, Nadia. Thank you. It's good to see you. It's great to have both of you in here. So. Nadia, there is a phrase uh, that has been used called the pandemic within the pandemic. Can you tell us what that means? So prior to COVID, survivors could physically go to agencies to access services and talk with the advocates and have access to limited technology in public spaces. But with COVID, people are staying at home, public spaces aren't available. And while agencies are providing care remotely, it's hard to re access that if you don't have a safe space to do that from. Abusers are using isolation as a control tactic, and this is isolation from services, but also from communities. Um, and so COVID is, is perpetuating, you know, the abuse and that control and making it really hard to access services. And it's reinforcing that power and control that survivors are facing, making it more dangerous for them during this time. That is, that is such a, it's such a sad thing to hear, yet it does not surprise me because there are many pandemics within this pandemic. Um, and it, it's not making it, it any easier as we fight this virus. Tracy, tell us about the partnership between Catherine Place and the Crystal Judson Family Justice Center and why is this partnership important? Catherine Place is a women's center on Hilltop, and we've been supporting women in this area since 2000. We started partnering with the FJC in about 2009 because of our Spanish language domestic violence support group called Juntas en Transición. The FJC still provides support for that group, but our partnership has really grown since then. So our staff work together to support individual clients. Abby McLean, their deputy director, is on our board of directors. I've just been invited to join the FJC's advisory board. Nadia was actually the volunteer coordinator at our last event. And I think the way that the FJC focuses on partnerships as a core part of their operating is hugely helpful to the whole community. Before COVID, we were working on a gender-based violence services coalition where everyone that is engaged in DV services in the area was trying to come together and build a training program so that new staff knew, okay, these are the services that are available to my clients in this area. And as COVID progressed, we actually ended up having weekly meetings talking about how we could best serve survivors as a community. And that would not have happened without the leadership of the FJC. This is a question for both of you, and, and Tracy, I'll have you lead off here. How have those services changed during COVID, and how do you provide care, both of you, right now? And go ahead and start, Tracy. So Catherine Place has always been a safe, welcoming space for women, and the pandemic has really changed how we approach services. So we provide three primary areas of support, individual advocacy, support groups, and healing arts. And since we can't see each other in person, we've shifted almost everything to either telehelp or video conferencing. So it, um, it has changed our approach, but it has had some 
some benefits. So we've had women that have moved away and haven't been able to participate and now are re-engaged in our support groups because they're able to join via Zoom. And we do provide on-site services for people who don't have a safe space to talk. So right now that's by appointment only and it's just individuals, but it is available. And we are still providing our emergency support services. So giving out gift cards, clothing, hygiene products when necessary. Those are all available on site from 10 to 3, Monday through Friday. Wow. I mean, we're talking about put the P and pivot. There it was. Nadia, how, how has uh, FJC um, changed during COVID and, and in terms of the services you're providing now as well? Yeah, so prior to COVID, like a lot of agencies, it was it tended to all be in person. But with COVID, we've had to pivot all of our care and services through our helpline, um, which answered over 8,000 calls last year. Our advocates are continuing to support survivors in filing for protection orders. We're just doing it remotely. Um, we're moving forward with our survivor well-being program through Zoom. Um, and we're really excited about one of our programs. We're working on a financial well-being and literacy course in partnership with an agency called MoneyWise. And those courses are going to be held through Zoom as well. And I think what this has really taught us is our partners have lifted care in such an amazing way that it's helped us identify how we can continue to provide remote care even when we're back in the office. Yeah, I, I often have these conversations about when science tells us that it's safe for us to gather, um, what, what silver linings will we bring with us into getting back to whatever normal is? And there's been so many ways that we have streamlined how we do things. Like both of you just said that maybe those will be areas that we continue as we try to get back to all being together. Tracy, tell us about the pilot program that you, you are doing with the UWT to support care providers in our community. So before the pandemic, we were talking to Dr. Jane Compson, who's a UWT philosophy professor, because she had done a cultivating compassion workshop here at Catherine Place, and we wanted to continue the partnership. And Jane's been working on a self-care curriculum called CARE, which stands for Compassion, Awareness, Resilience, and Empowerment. So we've been hearing a lot about burnout from other service providers in the community, and we were trying to figure out how to offer some services for them so that they had a way that, that was like a low barrier approach. And, and this is all before the pandemic, but we really felt like um, a digital library of resources was something that could help because then people could access it from their homes when they had time and they wouldn't have to worry about you know, going to class or something like that. So um, in collaboration with Professor Huatang Sun from the Global Innovation and Design Lab at UWT, we have provided a completely digital program. And the pilot of the program actually starts tonight at five. And if people are interested, they can go to our Facebook page because we Facebook Live the orientation that we did last week. And so you can learn more there. Wow, that, that is impressive, a digital library. And that's also, may I just add, a lot of work. And I, I know that, that that you don't have, you know, a huge staff. So that is incredibly impressive. Nadia, we've had you on before many times, and you mentioned the Spoken Voices Group. Would you remind us again, what is it and what does it do? So Voices is a committee of survivors that have received care in, in our community, and they help us inform our practices, especially during this time. Right now, as a committee, um, we're doing a book club, and we're focusing on projects that continue to advocate and provide education within the community, specifically one around advocating and providing education for young adults on what healthy relationships are. And one of the wonderful things about the Voices Committee is that as we've pivoted care, they have helped inform our work to ensure that survivors continue to be at the center of what we do. Yeah, absolutely. So time always goes by so quickly when we're talking about this, but I, I do want to ask you, Nadia, um, to talk about why um, when we look at access to safe technology, 
Why is that so important during this time? I mean, technology's always been used by abusers to control survivors. And with COVID, because everyone is at home, it just means that abusers have access to that technology even more. How do you connect to services if your partner's monitoring your phone or your email and you're with them 24 hours a day? So being able to have true connections to your community and professionals is incredibly challenging during this time. So survivors having access to safe technology allows them to start making and maintaining those connections. It allows them to be able to safety plan and make decisions that they wouldn't be able to without it. You know, you don't think about that. I mean, you really don't. I mean, most of the time we just think about uh, questions like, what do I tell a loved one? Um, why don't they leave? How can they leave? But you don't think about technology. And I know, Nadia, when I first had you on, when COVID first started, we talked about the um, signs that you put up in the grocery stores. Would you tell our audience about that? Yeah, so Tracy had mentioned before that at the very beginning of COVID, um, we were getting together as providers to, to support each other and figure out how to navigate this. Um, and this was actually Tracy's idea of grocery stores were one of the places that people could continue to go to. And so as a team, we put together a flyer and then we had folks reach out to grocery stores and gas stations and markets um, all around Pierce County to, to put these signs up so that survivors knew there were still resources available even during this time. And it had DV, domestic violence and sexual assault services on, on that flyer so that folks knew where they could contact. Brilliant idea, Tracy, brilliant idea. I mean, I would have never thought about that, but you're right, everybody has to go to the grocery store. So in this last two minutes that we have left here, um, question for both of you, um, what would you tell a loved one who is experiencing domestic violence right now? And Nadia, let's start with you. So I would say if a loved one tells you they're experiencing domestic violence, believe them. And it's also really important to understand that there are additional barriers to leaving right now because of COVID, um, which may mean that what they're doing is harm or risk reduction because of these additional barriers and not to judge their decisions. COVID's making leaving more complicated to unpack. So the idea of believing them, letting them know that you care about them and they deserve to be safe is really important. Beautifully said. What would you add to that, Tracy? I would agree with everything Nadia said. And I would also say that um, it's a really hard thing to think about how to completely redo your life and systems are moving slower than usual now. Those barriers are higher. It, it's hard for people to get help. Um, but Catherine Place focuses on emotional and spiritual support for all women. And so if you have a loved one who's experiencing domestic violence and it's hard on you, and you need somebody to talk to, then Catherine Place is here to reach out to because we experience both sides of it. We talk to the victims, the survivors, and the family members. So we have a deep understanding of what people are going through and how hard it is. That is amazing. So you are you are caring for the caregivers, to use that phrase. Of, of you're caring for the person who is supporting that person who is in, in a domestic abuse situation right now. Last question uh, for you, Tracy, how can people connect to your programs? Well, we have a great website at katherineplace.org. And as I mentioned, we have somebody on site 10 to 3, Monday through Friday. So our phone number is 253-572-3547. And we have a great Facebook page. We also are available by email at cplace at katherineplace.org. And we love it when people reach out to us. And Nadia, how can people uh, connect with your with you? So they can reach out to our helpline at 253-798-4166. And we answer that line Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 4.30. And they can visit our website at a place of help. Um, and we are also on Facebook. I love that. Thank you both for what you do. 
and for the many people behind you that we could not get on this Zoom call. Um, this is a ministry. It's something that is 24 seven with you, both of you and your team. And I just wanna say thank you so much for your big hearts and your brilliant minds. I wanna have you back on real soon. Thank Thanks. you. You're more than welcome.